Okay, so my research focused on isolating and characterizing what are known as bacteriophages in sewage that are specific for a certain subspecies of E. coli and Citrobacter fruendi. So, our body are made, I'm sorry, our bodies are made of tons and tons of eukaryotic cells, and sometimes these cells fall victim to certain pathogens. I really can't outline this for you, so I'm going to try to explain it to you as best as I can, but one of these pathogens are viruses. Now, when a virus attacks a cell, they attach to the cell membrane, insert itself into the cell, then hijack the cell's replicating mechanisms to produce progeny inside of the cell. Eventually, enough part of viral particles are produced that the cell eventually bursts open, and then these new viral particles go out to repeat the cycle. In addition, there is bacteria. Certain bacteria produce a toxin when they are metabolizing nutrients. This toxin can degrade our cells and in turn provide food for the bacteria. Now, toxins aren't the only thing that bacteria can produce. In addition, there's a substance known as antibiotics that are also produced by certain bacteria. And this actually inhibits other competing bacteria. Now, antibiotics has, as I'm sure all of you know, saved many of lives and has been a major um, uh, stepping stone in medicine. But unfortunately, many bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics, and an alternative must be um, investigated. The good news is that there are viruses that attack bacteria, and these viruses are known as bacteriophages. Now, if you see over here, once again, I really can outline it, but this picture over here is labeled T4 bacteriophage. It is a virus that attacks E. coli, and it's actually a nice uh, electron micrograph you can see over there, which is that red rod that is the E. coli bacterium, and all those little blue projections are actually the viral particles attacking the cell. Now, like all viruses, when this bacteriophage attacks a bacterium, it will eventually kill it as it's replicated. So since these viruses can kill bacteria, it, is, it does require further investigation if we are ever to sort of trend off from antibiotics and destroy this antibiotic resistance that, that, that's occurring. So in order to find bacteriophages, you must look where the bacteria is normally found. Now, I'm focusing on E. coli, 0157H7, and Citrobacter fruendi, which are enteric pathogens or bacteria that attack the gastrointestinal tract of humans. Now, they're also found in the GI tracts of animals. And when animals defecate, they're not only releasing waste, but the bacteria as well. So in order to find these bacteria phages, one must look where there's the most defecation. Or in my case, I went to a sewage plant. So my question was, can I prove that phages are present in sewage by characterizing them with the transmission electron microscope? And by doing so, I will help future generations of Wagner students who want to further analyze the bacteria phages. So since the virus particles are very small, as you see in that picture, I'm going back one time. As you see from this, that bacteria is small in itself, and let alone the virus particles look minute compared to it. So in order to find something that we can view this, we need something that can uh, give us intense magnifications. And that's what's called the transmission electron microscope. Now, unlike laboratory benchtop microscopes that use a natural light or artificial light, this uses an electron beam, which is shot down through a vacuum tube. Our specimen is housed inside of this tube, and then the beam passes through our specimen, and then through a series of lenses in a magnetic field, which we can then alter to stretch out the image and create a magnification effect. This image is then projected onto a platform, and I wish this was working, and you actually view it through, if you look in the bottom, there's a piece of glass, you look through the glass and you actually see your image. Now, regular laboratory microscopes can magnify images up to a thousand times normal size. The electron microscope has the capability of magnifying something up to 500,000 times its normal size. So in order to see something so small as a virus, we need a tool that can provide these magnifications. So for E. coli, I found four different types of bacteriophages. If you can look at pictures A, B, and D, you'll see that they have this type of icosahedral head and a tail attached to it. In contrast, the phage in picture C is spherical in shape and is coated in with these little surface proteins, which aid it in adhering to and penetrating in the bacterial cell. For Citrobacter, there was just one type of phage found. As we can see, it is icosahedral in shape and tailless. If you look at picture D, you see the virus by itself. And once again, I can't outline it, but it's over there. If you turn your attention to picture A, and I'm going to try to describe this as best as I can, there's actually the virus particle getting ready to dock with the bacterial cell. The bacterial cell is spanned horizontally across the middle of the picture, and that dark mass you see on the left side of the picture is the viral particle getting ready to attach to the cell. Now, picture C shows the next part of that virus's life cycle, which is uh, replication. The bacterial cell in the middle of picture C 
which you see has a dark mass in its right side. Now, that mass is not one viral particle, but the progeny being produced, so it's many viral particles being assembled. If you look above that cell, we actually see the end of this virus's life cycle. We see a ruptured cell membrane, and once again, this is in the upper portion of picture C, and we see four virus particles leaving the cell. So I concluded that the water samples in sewage do contain bacteriophages for these pathogens. Um, also, having learned the techniques used to isolate and characterize these viruses has given me an upper hand in, in the job market. After Wagner, I plan on attending graduate school and studying virology further. Uh, having learned these techniques used to isolate and observe these viruses will definitely make my life easier as a graduate student and as a scientist. All right, I'd like to thank you all for listening to what I have to say. I thank Dr. Kathleen Bobbitt, who was my advisor in this research project, Professor Christopher Corvo, and Zolmarie Franco, who assisted me with the electron microscopy portion, and Dr. Roy Moser and Dr. Adam Woolhan, whose guidance throughout this project was greatly appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Now, after graduate school, do you find yourself going to perhaps pharmaceutical research? Yeah, I, I actually intend to go on vaccine development. That's what I plan to focus my research on. Anything else? Yeah, thank you.